If you see somebody who's in really great shape, you ask them, do you work out? You know the answer. Yes, how often? And they'll tell you three times, four times, five times a week, whatever. In a seminar, I'll ask people, who here works out at least five days a week? And I'm stand up. And you look around that room, and you know that they work out five times a week because you can see their body. You don't just get a result without some kind of action, without some form of ritual. Ritual meaning actions you do consistently. Now, do you think those people that are out there working out five days a week, do they have more time than you do? Or I have, or anybody else? Of course not. Is their life less busy? Of course not. It's just a must for them. They must work out that way, and they've made that turn, and their life changed. So I'm not saying you have to work out five days a week. I'm just saying whatever you really want, wants don't get met consistently. Standards do. Whatever you identify, this is who I am. And so it's not so much about changing your identity as there's expanding it. You know, deciding that, you know, instead of your goal is to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm going to transform my body. I'm going to take on a new challenge. I'm going to find some technique or strategy. There's a million of them that can reframe myself where I'm going to feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work, because it's tough out there and I want to be stronger than I've ever been before. I want to go in front of the mirror and if I'm naked, not, you know, want to laugh. I want to look there and take a good look and go, yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of whatever I see there. I think the number one way most people do with their emotions is they try to avoid them. By the way, how effective is that? No. You might do it for a moment or two, but most people, they just try to avoid feeling. Isn't that true? People like, who don't like to feel negative feelings are so afraid of negative feelings, they try not to feel any feelings. Now, if you don't feel any feelings, you really are going to have some pain. Because that's what life is for. Life, part of the juice of life is expressing and feeling. But sometimes people have had so much pain, they say, I don't want to feel anything. It never works, because eventually it comes out anyway. And then you feel bad about never having felt bad. You feel bad about the fact you didn't feel good. You have a sense of loss because you didn't feel things. Second way people try and deal with their emotions is they endure them. They're going to grunt it out. I'm going to endure these. I'm going to make it through this. I'll hang on to this. And again, this doesn't work. Now they may try and disassociate after a while here again, or they may try and suppress the emotion. I'll just endure it. I'll just keep pushing it down and I'll make it through it. I'll just endure it. That doesn't make it better either. Third way. What some people do, I don't know if you've ever seen this happen, I'm sure you've never done this. People compete to see who feels the worst. What some people do is they keep track of their emotions so they can share them with other people and compete. So somebody says, oh man, I feel like hell. Oh, you feel like hell. Let me tell you how I feel. You think you got a problem, let me tell you my problem. You think you got the biggest problem, check out my problem, it stands out to here. And people sit there and try and argue about who's got the worst problem. Right? Or the fourth thing that I don't have up there that I'd say, the fourth thing that people do is try and share their pain. Share their problem. They think, oh, I can get rid of my emotion by sharing it with others. So they try and get other people to feel bad too. That way we'll be friends. We can share in the pain together. We must love each other. Are these very intelligent ways to deal with your emotions, yes or no? No, you don't want to avoid them. You don't want to endure them. You don't want to compete for who's got the biggest and worst emotion. Try and make yours worse than somebody else's. You don't want to share them. Make them feel bad too. What a friend you are. Instead, what you want to do is step five. Learn from them and utilize them. You want to learn from them and utilize them. Now, in order to learn from them and utilize them, in order to change an emotion, we have to change what something what's to us. Starts with an M. We have to change what something what? Means to us. When we change what something means, we transform our emotion. We have a transformation. Does that make sense? In other words, if I'm feeling really upset about something, I'm angry, angry, angry. Do I have to communicate that to get off my anger? No, not necessarily. I'm angry because of the meaning I linked up. What if I change what it means in my head and I realize that hey, that's not what it means? Then will I feel angry? Yes or no? Yes or no? If I'm really angry about something, I'm angry because of the, what I've linked up to it. I'm saying, well, I'm angry because they did that and that means this. But if I really analyze it and I look at it for a while and I go, God, that's a bunch of crap. It doesn't really mean that. Then I've transformed my feeling. Do I now have to go to that person and say, what you did made me angry? Yes or no? Yes or no? 
No, because I don't have that feeling. I truly don't have it. I'm not suppressing it. I've transformed it. Suppression, however, is when you keep the same meaning, that you keep the same meaning. You're upset about something and you keep the same meaning. You don't change the meaning. All you try and do is stuff the emotion. You try to pretend it's not there. That's suppression. You don't have to change your life. All you have to do is find somebody with a lower standard and you'll feel good about yourself. But if you feel that good feeling, it's an illusion. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard. It's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. And look at the best of the world in anything. Tiger Woods, what's, what's his vision? To win golf tournaments? No, to be the best that ever lived. That's his goal, that's his vision. But here's what's interesting, he backs it up with rituals. If you just have a vision and you don't have the rituals, stop lying to yourself. His rituals are, he started doing things nobody did before. He went and started lifting weights. Golfers lifting weights? No way. He went out and he changed his swing when he was the best in the world because he realized in order to be the best that ever lived, he's gonna have to change his swing. If you don't think about golf, you don't change your swing when you're the best. And he went and retrained himself because he has different rituals than other golfers. Now many people are modeling his rituals to get better. It's amazing. You know, you look at somebody like uh, Michael Phelps, the 2008 swimmer, won seven, you know, only two people I think in history, if I remember correctly, that have gotten seven gold medals in one session. And here's a guy, he's got number six under his belt and he's exhausted and he's going in for that final swim. I'm sure you remember. And how does the guy win by one hundredth of a second? What would you need to do differently each morning if you're going to be that kind of energy, that kind of strength? How would you have to, how often would you work out? What days would you work out? What time? A ritual is something you do consistently, usually at a specific time, so it becomes automatic. Let me tell you something. Willpower doesn't last, but rituals can last a lifetime. I bet you have some rituals in your life right now you've been doing for years, even though some of them don't serve you. I'm just saying, wake yourself up. Make, if you want a new year and a new life, you don't need to start on January 1st. Start today, start with this little video and just begin to see what happens and see how easy it is to just do a few little rituals. Don't do them all, just do two or three new things. And you know what happens? You'll get momentum. Because once you discipline yourself in one area of your life, you feel yourself doing it in other areas as well. And I always say something that my original teacher taught me, I always remind people, there's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline or is the pain of regret. And discipline weighs ounces, as my friend Jim Rohn taught me. Regret weighs tons. You don't have regret. So right now, what do you want to change? What's it really like? What are the rituals that got you there? That'll take a little homework. If you're not sure, ask the people around you. They'll tell you what your rituals are. What do I really want in depth? What are the rituals that'll get me there? And then get yourself to start a few of those actions and lock them in place. So if you keep the same negative emotion, you don't change how you feel about it, you just try and pretend it's not there. That's suppression, and that's when you get in trouble. So our goal is not just to take things and not suppress them and just express whatever we feel, because if you just go express whatever you feel and you don't think it out, are you gonna always communicate well, yes or no?
now. In fact, you may say things later on you'll regret in the heat of the moment because you were in state. So what you first want to do is see if you can transform it, honestly and sincerely. And if you can't, then your goal is to get someone to help you to transform it. Go to the source and get the source to help you to transform this. So you know what? I felt this way about this. I made up this bizarre meaning. I know it's not true because I know who you really are. If this is like a crap I did in my head. Can you help me? I need to change this. Can you give me some more information or some feedback or help me to clarify this thing? I, I, I kind of screwed this up in my brain because I know that's not what you meant. That's what I did inside my head. Can you help me out? Is that different then? You know something? The other day when you did this, I felt this, which by the way implies what they did made you feel something. Is that true? Yes or no? Does anybody do anything and make you feel something? Yes or no? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now you have a right to feel the way you feel, but that isn't true that it's actually what made you feel that way. You chose to make, make yourself feel that way. You communicated that to yourself. So instead of saying, when you did this, that made me feel this, that's implying that somebody made you do something and that takes responsibility away from the one person who can change your life, meaning you. So I request in the future this. Nothing wrong with any of that. What we want to do is enhance it. The way we want to enhance it is come from the place of I'm communicating because I want to transform something and I'm responsible, not them. You know, I need your help. I need your help. The other day when this thing happened, I used that to interpret that to mean this. And I know it's not true because I know who you are. I need some clarity. Can you help me out? I got to clean this up in me. Who's responsible? By the way, will they want to help you? Yes or no? By the way, what you're really doing here is making clear what you're really doing, which is you're doing a cry for help. Maybe not crying, you're making a request for help instead of crying. Make sense? And people here, this is a request for help. Do we want to help other people, yes or no? Especially us, we're all in the helping business. That's why we do what we do. That's the bottom line. So we're going to develop a format like this where we don't suppress, but we don't just express. Because you know what happens? If you just go out there and whatever you feel you express, what you really do is you vent. And then you make it right or you demand. See, venting and demanding does not make communication better in the long term. How many would agree with me on this? Passion will take you where nothing else will ever take you. It'll give you that decided edge. It'll help you to stand.
it out. You gotta love it. It's gotta be what you are supposed to do. And I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. You ain't got to start with wealth. You ain't got to start with your parents graduated. It's not the hand that you dealt. It's how you play your hand. When people die or people get sick or something happens in your life. I do have one very special friend, though. If I was stuck in a Mexican jail and accused unduly, I would call this friend. Guess why I'd call this friend? He would come and get me. Another key is learning to separate majors from minors. That's high on the list. Making sure you don't spend major time on minor things. This is why you need to think on paper. Put your game plan on paper.